This is the third of three videos in the Flexim HC Urgent Care tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to run the model and analyze data. Since much of the data is focused around the patient, I first want to show you how patients are generated by the model. Double-click on the Patient Arrivals door to open its Properties window. There are three ways to generate patients. You can set up a specific schedule, or an hourly pattern, or use a statistical distribution. The default is to use an exponential distribution with a mean of 20 minutes. You can learn more about this important concept in the user's manual, but it's important to be aware of the flexibility you have here. Now let's take a closer look at this toolbar. It's laid out in order for you. In video one, we used the library to create the model layout. In video two, we created a patient track. The next step is flow charting. Here, we'll perform an auto-connect by pressing this button. Flexim HC requires the objects in the model to be connected in a certain way, so patients can travel from one object to another correctly. These connections are based on the model layout and the patient tracks, so the auto-connect won't work until the first two steps are complete. This next set of buttons causes the model to run. Click this one to reset the model. If the model has been running, it clears the patients out of the model and returns the staff to their starting locations. It also sets up some behind the scenes stuff, so you need to click it even if this is the first time you're running the model. This button is the run button. Click this one to set the model in motion. Next is the stop button. This will halt the model until you are ready to continue running it. The yellow button is the next button. Clicking this button will speed the model ahead to the next major event. This is extremely handy when watching a slow model. The model may appear to be doing nothing while it is waiting for the next patient to arrive or while the nurse is working with the patient. When we click the next button, we jump ahead to the patient's arrival or the patient's next activity. As far as the data is concerned, the timing hasn't really been altered. It's just that we let the computer crunch the numbers while we move on on the animation. Next is the run speed slider. This controls how fast the model runs in relation to real time. Faster or slower. The drop-down menu allows you to set a specific speed. A value of 1 means that one model minute passes for every one of our real-time seconds. 100 means that 100 model minutes occur for every real-time second. If you choose to use a stop time, the model will automatically halt when the chosen time is reached. Time is in minutes, so a value of 1000 means to stop running after 1000 model minutes. The final thing I want to show you is the dashboard. This is where all the charts and graphs and data can be viewed. There are several choices available under the categories of text values, pie charts, bar graphs, stacked bar graphs, and line graphs. Choose a graph to have it appear on the dashboard. You can resize the dashboard to add more graphs, or you can add tabs to hold additional graphs. For most graphs, data is updated in real time as the model runs. Let's create a dashboard and then watch it update while the model runs. Reset the model and start it running. Let's start with the day and time. This tells us what day and hour the model is currently in, which can be handy to know when looking at the rest of the data. Next, I want to look at the patient milestones as a stacked bar graph. Remember the milestones we created on the patient track? Here's where the milestones are used. This graph shows us the percentage of time that the patients are spending on each milestone activity. I can easily look at this graph and see that the majority of the time is being spent on triage. In fact, as the model continues to run, the triage time continues growing. This is because the patient is waiting in the waiting room for the nurse or the room to be free. Once the patient is in the back office, they appear to proceed smoothly through the rest of the model. If I had a patient state times pie chart, I can see the same thing in a different way. Patients are spending the bulk of their time waiting for a room. All of this tells me that I may need more nurses or more triage rooms. Let's see what happens when we add another nurse and a second triage room. Be sure to push the auto connect button and reset the model. Now, as we run the model, the triage time stays around 15 minutes, which is what we expect. The number of patients waiting for a room is way down, and the waiting room no longer gets backed up. Let's make a second tab 
and put on it the patients processed per hour of the day and patients in process per hour of the day. The first tells me how many patients have left the office during each hour. The second tells me how many patients are in the office during each hour. Now we can see which hour of the day is the busiest, which in turn tells us that we might want additional staff on hand during these busy hours. For more information on FlexSim HC, please visit the FlexSim website.